this video for people who are brand new to the hobby of, of sequencing lights, Christmas lights, using a product called X Lights. Um, so it's for absolute beginners. And it's to make you aware of the terminology, or a lot of the terminology that's used, so that and how they hang together. Because when I was first involved in the hobby a few years ago, uh, I found it difficult initially to get my head around what a controller was, what a sequencer was, and all the rest of it. So this video is designed to give you a high level overview of what the hardware bits are and how they hang together. And then later videos will go through it in more detail. But for now, imagine that we've got our sequencer, which is a computer, and it can be Windows, Mac, or Linux, it doesn't really matter. And that sequencer then controls sets of lights that you've got strung up outside, colored lights that are you know, red, green, blue, and can be at various uh, brightnesses. And so that they're known as addressable LEDs because each individual little light or pixel, as they're called, can be turned on and off. It can be made to a certain color, a certain brightness. Uh, it's very clever technology and it's all over three wires, which is which makes life uh, a little bit more, I won't say easier, but it, it makes the wiring less complex. And then obviously over the, the pixels themselves, some of them on, are outlines of houses, some of them are in props, and these are what they call props. They're usually the thing called Coro, and you push the pixels through the props in a certain order. Uh, and then, you know, we'll talk about that later, but it gives a really good effect. But you need the controllers to actually convert the information coming from the computer. Basically, it comes over a, you know, your internal network, if you like, as an Ethernet as an Ethernet packet to a controller. And the controller has a number of ports. This one has 16 ports. And each port can be connected to a number of props. And we'll, we'll go over that in more detail later. But, but they're what's known as the ports. And each out of each of those ports, basically, you've got three wires, positive, negative, and a data wire. And the information to turn them on and off comes from a data wire. Obviously, the lights are all low voltage. They're not mains voltage. So they'll typically be 5 volt or 12 volt pixels. And so you need a power supply to drive them. So the power supply, as I typically, it would be 5 volts or 12 volts. It can be 24 volts, but I'll explain that in another video later. Uh, there are some advantages to that. But, the, but they need power supplies. So the power supply is generally connected to the controller. Not always, but again, we'll cover that later. But most of the time it is. And then each of the props is connected to a port on the, uh, and that's basically three wires. If you're going to use a sequence that's more than just an animation, and you've got, for example, you, you want a, a Christmas song, and you want to make that, the lights go in time with the music and all the rest of it, you really need some kind of audio output. And typically that would be uh, an amplifier and a couple of speakers, but it could be other things. You could have a FM transmitter to transmit to cars, uh, radios that people sat outside. But again, it, you've got to have some audio component for people to hear the sequence as well as see it if you're going to do some kind of musical sequence, otherwise it doesn't really get the same eff effect. The disadvantage to using the computer is that if you then, if the computer crashes or it gets turned off or used for other things, then the sequence goes dark. So what tends to happen, not always, but tends to happen is that people have a separate little device called a sequence player. And usually, again, not always, but usually it's a Raspberry Pi and it's running some software called Falcon Pi Player. And basically what happens is the x Lights program itself, you can, in effect, transfer the sequence from there onto the Falcon Pi Player and that will take the place of the computer. So then you can take the computer away, switch it off, use it for other things, and then you've got a self-contained setup that will run more reliably than uh, just off a, a standard computer. And as I say, you can use the computer for other things. You can have more than one controller. So if you've got 16 ports there connected to, and that you wanted to expand that, you can at a future point buy another controller. I mean, I've actually got seven controllers in, in my setup, but you there's no uh, no real limit to how many controllers you have, and generally the controller comes attached to a power you know a power supply. Not always, but generally. But at that point, usually you need an extra little component called a network switch, because all this communication between the FPP and the controllers is over Ethernet. So you need to extend the network, and 
there are other ways, but the easiest way is just to buy a nice uh, simple network switch that allows you to connect the controllers to the Falcon Pi player. And that basically is most of the terminology you'll hear. So this has just been a basic introduction uh, and at future videos, if people are interested, I can go into more detail about how all these bits work. But if you understand this, uh, I would have found this useful a few years ago. And so hopefully you'll find it useful now. Um, but that's it, yeah. So uh, cheers for now.